there it goes. Hey guys, so Mama Patriot Gallery has some words. Nobody is above the law. And that's what you're going to hear. So here's the deal. We have an amazing, beautiful, I can step backwards. Is, okay. it, that's, is, that, is that better? Outside deck area. We've got Robert and Jamie Ag coming over tonight. We're going to have dinner with them. Banners for Freedom. Banners for Freedom.com. Go donate. They're saving lives. We're having them over tonight. We're going to, we're not really inviting you guys for dinner, but you're getting the prequel here. Patriot Gallery has, do you all know why we call her Patriot Gallery? When she signs things, she'll make a post PG. It's not because it's just kid friendly, which most of the time it is kid friendly. Because when we were doing our resistance chick stuff, Patriot Gallery would come along the side and they would say, who's that in the peanut gallery? Patriot Gallery didn't like peanut gallery. So that's why she's the Patriot Gallery, AKA JC, not because of Jesus Christ. She's the little Jesus Christ. Those are her initials. You can take a guess as to what those are. A million combinations. So she has a message for you guys today that nobody is above the law with a word that you're going to add to your vocabulary today, emanation. She's going to explain it. Mom, take it away. Hi, guys. Okay, so when I'm President Obama was president, I used to say he's an abomination to God. And it just went along. But I'm not insulting the presidency or anything like that because you're not really a president since the 1900s. They've been putting people in office. They've been rigging the elections. And so we haven't had our own president for a long time. So I never, I never considered him a president any more than Bush's or Clinton's. And they were just, they weren't presidents, okay? So anyways, so my word today, it just came together. I was talking to people in chat rooms and um, comment sections. And they'd ask a question, I'd answer the question. So I'm just going to share with you what I got from this conversation with people. But abomination is abomination. And then emanation, well, it's spelled E-M-A-N, nation, you know. It's, um, well, then I got to thinking Emmanuel. Emmanuel Nation, like Jesus is Emmanuel with an E. And um, emanation is we're a source, a power source. And when I did a blog earlier, I did it on um, wall builders. Get it up here. But um, wall builders had a quote from Mark Twain. Just a minute, I want to find it. To explain the um, em emanation. Wish I could get this all the bigger so you can see it. But anyways, I, was, I put this on a post. Emanation, we should all know this word. It is our power source. To defeat all evil. This word is our power source to defeat all evil. And then I was thinking about it and going back and forth. And I'm like, oh my gosh, i got to tell Leah Michelle about this. This is our power source. Because emanation means the act of flowing or proceeding from a fountain, a head or, or origin. And so if Jesus is king, which everybody's always saying in the Christian realm, then all our power and our source emanates from Jesus Christ and so we have an emanation instead of an abomination I thought that was really kind of cute I thought it was catchy instead of an abomination we have an emanation and that's instead of the devil being king we have Jesus so William Penn then presents this is from wall builders I'll bring it up might be easier to read And this is about the first great awakening, too. So we're in the middle of an awakening. Sorry.
I thought I'd be able to find it easy, and I can't. But if you go to any of our social sites, you can find it. Um, I have the link in the emanation uh, post I did. So anyways, William Penn then presents the biblical purpose of law and theory of government, quoting from the book of Romans and other scriptures. He states the government seems to be a part of religion. The government seems to be a part of religion. This is what the whole thing is about. This came from my conversations. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to share this with Leo and Michelle. So you guys are Leo and Michelle for now because they're too busy right now. A thing sacred in its institution and end for end. A thing sacred in its institution and end. The go so government seems to be a part of religion itself, sacred into, in its institution and end. That's the reason you have it. Okay. For it does not directly remove the cause. It crushes the effects of evil. Emanation. It, it, this is how you defeat all evil. So it's really important. I don't know how to get this out. Uh, hopefully my comments so other people will get out for you to understand. For it does not directly remove cause. It crushes the effects of evil. And is such, though a lower yet an emanation of the same divine power that is both author and object of pure religion. Pure religion. And religion is important. Religion is what you believe. And government says here the, that government seems to be a part of religion itself. And this is William Penn. It, and he got it from the Bible. And then I put down the uh, definition of emanation. An abstract but perceptible thing that issues or originates from a source. And William Penn is saying it comes from the divine power, divine source, the Bible, but also this power must come from within you. And I'll tell you about that too. Um, she saw the insults as emanations of his own tortured personality, the action of action or process of issuing from a source the risk of random gas emanation a tenuous substance or form of radiation given off by something vaporous emanation surrounded the mills foundation so anyways emanation I just put that up last night I wanted everybody to kind of think at one time Judge Janine had said antithetical and I'm like what in the world is that I've never heard this word before antithetical and it's like one religion um, that shall not be main, named as antithetical in, to a Christian religion or a Christian nation and it's really important to know all this stuff oh and I wanted to say Leah and Michelle are going to um, St. Louis this weekend and I asked you to pray for them. They're not really going through. They're going to go through St. Louis. They're not going to go St. Louis. Um, they went to St. Louis last year. And at least 36 people. No, 30 people or more. Were attacked by a bioweapon. And then Lee and Michelle were at home. And I was attacked. My brother was attacked. So many people were attacked. It just spread like wildfire. And um, we're all alive and well, but it was an attack, and so we hesitate to go back because it's the same time, same weekend, almost the same dates, and they're going back for the um, Mike Lindell symposium on the uh, selection code, which I'm talking about, that for a hundred years they have, the, the bad guys have been choosing our presence for us, and that's what the selection code's about. And there's living, limited spacing. So Mike Lindell would like everybody to go to Thrive Time and other places, um, wherever you possibly can, to go see it live. I don't know if Friday is going to film it live, but he's going to have it live on Frank's speech, definitely. He's going to play two whole days, like 48 hours straight, of course, not at night time. And he wants everybody there. He wants to get like a million, if not a billion people to watch it. Because it's so important. He said it's so important. He's going to have speakers from 50 states. And Leah and Michelle are going to go represent Ohio. So it's really important. But I'm asking you to pray for Leah and Michelle. Um, 
that they will be kept safe and protected. They're going to Springfield, which is about 249 miles uh, west of St. Louis. So please remember them. And again, if you go to any one of our social uh, networks, uh, except for Facebook, you might find this on Mines, on Bardian, Agab, Miwi, and on up, uh, where we go, when we go, one we go. I'm trying to remember all the places I put this up at. And so you can find more about it, and you can find the blog. Oh, it's not a blog. I went to, you can go to um, Leah Michelle's webpage, Resistance Chicks. I put it up there all about the information for this weekend that they're asking, I'm asking you to pray for. Last week, last year was Bards Fest. I'm asking everybody to pray for Leah and Michelle for their safety and for the group safety also because we are in a war and, and they attack you when you get together with large groups and there will be some kind of attack. Well, hopefully we can thwart that attack. So PG here left this comment. I responded with the authority, not my opinion, but a fact check. Fact check means you go to an authority. See, we all have to have our fact checkers. We all have to become fact checkers from now on. We have to say something. When we say something, we have to go to an authority. That means nobody's above the law. So an authority is going to have, give you the law or give you what's right and wrong. So you want to have an authority so it's not just your opinion because we know an anonymous source said this, or an anonymous source said this. You should have a fact checker on everything to have power behind your words, the emanation behind your words, a source. And humble yourself before God. The meek, those under God, shall inherit the land. So we want to get the land back. We have to meek and become humble and before God and submit to God. No one is above the law must be prefaced with the words God's law. No one is above God's law. We need to remind some politicians and some Americans of this fact. Because you can have a law like public school and they're molesting children and you can say it's legal but it, that those people are breaking the laws of God. There are no law can be above God's law. All laws must submit to God. Those children have the right before God to be kept safe and protected from all this stuff going on in schools. Their rights come from God. That's why you say nobody is above the laws of God. And so when somebody makes a law of making something horrible, legal, okay, they're putting themselves above the laws of God and they arbitrarily make a law based on their opinion with no facts and no source of authority to go with it. So instead of having an abomination, we want an emanation of the power source of God. Because you could say, um, well, they did abortion. They said that was legal. Well, where did that source come from? Where did this source, where is the authority that told them they could do that? Well, there is no authority on earth that would you allow you to do that. So they were breaking, they were putting themselves above the laws of God. So the government cannot just make a law because they say it is their opinion and a bunch of people vote for it because they say in a democracy, why we have a republic. In a democracy, the most immoral uh, gang up and get this big majority and so they always write the laws, and the laws can be a horrible, horrible laws that um, allow other people to be unjustly discriminated against and unjustly treated like the fiat dollar. That's, about, that's men setting themselves above the laws of God. Men are treated equally and fairly when we all use gold and silver coins. And then we are humble before God. We are meek before God. We are submitting to the Constitution that says only gold and silver can be money. We're submitting to God's Word that says only gold and silver, pure gold, real money. And this is... I'm getting ahead of myself. 
So it's just that we want to be fact checkers. Now this is a response to me saying about Oni's gold and silver money. And this person came back with, when Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard, it became fake money. Greenbacks went back with by gold where a certificate that was worth the face value is in gold. Silver was also used for money in coins. Silver was taken out of circulation in 1964, replaced by nickel and copper. I would support greenbacks if dollars were put back on the gold standard. And I have to respond to this. Article 1, Section 10, only, only, only Congress, not FDR, not Nixon, not Lincoln, not um, Biden or Ob Obama. You know he's making the choices. None of them can decide anything about the money. They don't have a constitutional right. I mean, FDR had no constitutional right to confiscate the gold and, and do what he did. Only Congress has this right. But then Congress is limited also. But Congress must show their above reproach. The most gentlemen of all, God-fearing good men, living under submission to God, reading and understanding and obeying God only. Or you have the most immoral people, the majority, democracy, take over and democracies kill each other off because the most immoral and they're making all the laws. You have a republic where everybody is under God and submission to God, so we have a standard of morals that nobody is above God and we almost submit to those laws so it's not arbitrary and so um, a congressman can only make laws under submission to God's law they're limited living under submission to God a reading, understanding, obeying God, uh, God only. I, as a human being, I can only, because before you die, you'll be held accountable before God. That's why they made these laws. If I sin, God will ask me why I did it. You know, that's why a lot of people were uh, burned at the stake or allowed themselves to be killed because they would not break a law that God made. They'd rather die and be persecuted or burned at the stake or whatever, have their fingernails ripped off than to break the law of God. And tyrants will always ask you to break God's law. But they wanted to go to heaven, so they, they didn't think their lives on this earth were worth so much to spend eternity in hell for a fle few fleeting years. Because earth, I mean, on this earth, your life is just a passing moment. It's here today, gone. It, it, I mean, I'm 62 now, so I know. I've seen the years go by. They just fly by, and it's gone before you know it. So you don't want to sin, and, and just one sin for a, a fleeting moment is like having an affair just for a fleeting moment. Or you take drugs and you overdose and your life's ended. It's the same thing with breaking God's law. You don't want to spend eternity in hell just because one thing you gave into. And so as a human being, I'm accountable before God, everybody in America, everybody on the earth is, to obey Him and Him only. So I'm telling this person, I can only obey the Constitution. The Constitution says gold and silver coins only. I can only obey God because the Constitution is in submission to God's Word. Um, I can only obey the Bible. I can only be an honest person. Only uh, gold and silver coins in your hand is an honest, fair, just transaction. Anything else is a debt or an IOU. Article 1, Section 10, James 5, Amos 8, Revelation 6, 5 and 6. I will make decisions, as everybody should, based on authority above all of us. So nothing is arbitrary. And there are limits to what the government can do in order to have a republic. If you have a democracy, then it's the majority wins. In a republic, 
everybody has to submit to the higher law above us all, which is the Bible or God or God's spirit in man emanating out of us. And we show that we have power. The disciples walked around showing they had power because they were healed the sick and they would deliver people and they um, raise people to dead and stuff like that. Then you know God is confirming his word that you speak is the truth. And so if I'm speaking the truth, God will confirm it to you somehow and you'll feel the power of God and love of God, the anointing of God, and he'll heal you somehow or deliver you or touch you or set you free somehow. Then you know I told the truth. Now, I've joined Joshu TV, has a social network. So Joshua, so much. There are so many options there. He has a meeting room. You can zoom in. You can live stream like six or seven people talking all at the same time. He has so much to offer over there. And he doesn't have a big old bunch of staff. He does have a staff. But he doesn't take, he doesn't got, make a lot of money, okay? He doesn't sell ads and stuff. He's working towards that. But he has lots and lots of options over there. It's a great place. You can upload videos. It's a social. It's just a great place. So then I was talking to somebody else. He's all fit together with emanation and nobody's above the law of God. Um, great question comment was left. I'm sorry if I offended you. It is not my intention to offend anyone. The problem I have with religion or religious people is saying through Jesus Christ. He is the only begotten son. Well, if Jesus is only son, what are we to God? I too am God's child, aren't I? And you as well. Look, evil will be See, evil will be even in God's kingdom, as it is said. We must be very careful whom we are praying to. God doesn't change his mighty plans. Pray to God straight. You don't need to go through any other man-made gods. Research Flavian signature, whatever that is. I don't know. Okay. But so I, I gave him an answer, and this kind of fits with religion and everything. I said, no offense. I love talking religion. It has been forbidden by the master race for, and I put LO, for over a hundred years. Since, since they came up with this Marxism, fascism, communism, uh, Hitler stuff, there are a group of people who have forbidden us to talk religion. I mean, they, and they call themselves the master race. So I said the master race is forbidden us to um, talk religion. I asked him before, question before, why do you think they took out the Ten Commandments? Why do you think they took down the manger seasons of Christmas? Why do you think they took out prayer at school? Why do they think they talk, took the Bible out? Because when you think of God, his power shows up. And they have to conform to, they're not, they find, we, the people, say, you're not above God's law. You must submit, and I only have to submit to God's law, and they don't want people to know this. That's why for religion has been demonized. Religion is simply what you believe. It's nothing more or less. So I said, no offense taken. I love talking religion or religious. It has been forbidden by the master race, LOL, for over 100 years. Every family will say, don't start talking religion. We'll get in a fight. But every word you say is religion. It is what you believe. It is okay to come over my house and talk about sports. Uh, football or baseball, whatever. But sports is idle. And the people in sports is an idol. And it's okay to come over here and talk about movies and movie stars. But they're idols. And they're leading you against God. And it's worship. It's a religion. So sports is a religion. It's what you believe. It's what you talk about. It's what you think about. It's what you're obsessed with. Same with like soap operas or movies or TVs. If you're obsessed with it, you think about it, you love it. That's your, what you're worshiping. That's what your belief. Uh, that's what your mind is thinking on all the time. So you always talk about religion. You have to have religion if you're a human being. You have to have a belief. 
But you're saying your religion is okay to talk about sports and TV and movies. But my religion, Christianity, isn't allowed to be talked about. And that's what they've done for over a hundred years. The elite said it showed you what, what's okay to talk about and what isn't okay to talk about. But they didn't tell you all those things you talk about are idols. Okay, it's all idol worship, a religious belief. Just don't talk about Jesus and God through Jesus' death on the cross. Okay. It's through Jesus' death on the cross. All men can turn to God and be filled with God and made whole. What does made whole mean? Well, Adam and Eve, uh, they turned from God and they had God's spirit in them. And God was with them, walked with them. Wherever they went, God went with them. They were one with God. Like a married couple, you become one. And so when you're with God, it's always with you. You're married to God. But when um, they sinned, God's spirit left them. And they felt naked and they felt ashamed. Through Jesus Christ's death, God comes and lives in us again. His spirit. Now we are whole again. Children of God. We should hear the voice of God. And we should hear God speaking to us, talking to us. Just like you hear your husband and wife speaking to you. So your children. It's really easy once you get all the lies out of your head. So God comes and uh, lives in us again. His spirit. Now we are whole children of God, just like uh, Jesus was whole. Except he talked about, aren't we the children of God just like Jesus? Well, there's a little twink, twink, or um, Jesus is the only son because his seed, God's seed, went into Mary's womb. It was God, for, this is a crude word, but for people to understand it was God's ejaculation, his power, his source, went into Mary. And um, because of the, his seed went into Mary's womb, was God's spurn, the divineness of God from heaven went into Mary. No one else can say that. No one else can say they have a virgin birth. Okay? So we covered religion. We covered all these facts. We covered all this stuff. And it comes back to emanation. And I'm trying to talk about emanation. Instead of having an abomination where they make all these laws and all these rules just by a majority vote and they're not submitted to anything that's solid, that's rock, that's unmovable. And they just make laws above God's laws and it's not the people that matter. We the people are going to be accountable to God. Did we obey His word? Did we obey the God? And so they can't make a law making you sin. And so all their laws must be subjected to God's law. So when they give these court cases, they come along and say, Trump's not above the law. Well, they're not above the law either. And we're talking about nobody's above God's law. And they, all laws must submit to God's laws. And then you end all your fighting. You end all your ignorance. You end all your division and you're, you're, nobody's fighting because everybody has to look at one set of laws and it's the Bible. Now we might fight over interpretation but then it comes down to what is just? What's the right thing to do? What is holy? Because like with gold back money it's, it's in, they say that all the gold's in Fort Knox and then we're making a piece of paper to back it but that was a lie and they changed the value of gold once they, once they got everybody's money like for thirty-two dollars, they took people's um, gold coins from them, gave them thirty-two. They changed the value. It's like forty-two dollars. I don't know exact numbers, but they cheated. That was unfair. It was unjust. Um, the the that ten-dollar gold piece is worth one um, ten silver dollars. Period, and that's it. You can't change the value of gold and silver from that. When they say Congress has the right to ch give the value because we have four money coming in in exchange. And so we want to make sure everybody's treated fair and justly. But $10 gold piece is equal to 10 silver dollars. It's fair. It's just. So all laws must be fair and just. They started printing this money and they didn't have the gold to back it. It said gold certificate. It said you can, um, you can 
turn this in for gold, and then they made it legal to turn it in for gold, and they took everybody's gold. There was so much horrible crimes going on there because they were not submitted to, and we the people didn't hold them accountable to God and His Word and the Constitution. Only gold and silver coins are money. Can you take that bucket with you, Leo? It's got stuff in it. The one with the lid on it. And so, don't ever say gold back money to me because you're just saying me, I, I don't mind being conned. I don't mind being ripped off. I don't mind people not paying me. I don't mind being a slave. I do mind being a slave. Jesus Christ set me free. He said, for this freedom, Christ died. I'm going to stay free and I'm going to stay free by submitting to God and me and God will deal with you and you're not going to steal from me and rob me and you're not going to steal from this country and rob this country because I've held, uh, I'm responsible, we the people are responsible, it's our right and our duty to uphold the constitution, each person, not just a serviceman, we're all part of that militia and we're all, ha uh, we're all to hold each other accountable to the word of God and to the constitution and then you won't have this gold back anything that just gives somebody a right to cheat whoever is printing those gold pack certificates we know they print they gave why do we why do you think we have corporations today huge corporations they gave all the money to these certain people and you didn't get it I didn't get it only certain people got like millions and million dollars loans billion dollar loans the average person was wiped out, flooded out. See, the Constitution Declaration is written for the individual to be treated fairly with everybody else. And you can't have this unfair treatment of these huge uh, corporations or businesses. And they came here so they could live free from this system of um, slavery. You own your own land. You work your own land. You raise your own children. We each obey God and have our own gold and our own silver coins because the Bible commands us, I am commanded by God to make them sure that my gold coins and my silver coins are fair and just to my fellow man. That I have just weights and balances. So the Constitution has to uphold my right to obey God if we're going to put all our money together in a pile and we all make our same gold from the same foundry. It has to be precise, and it is. Sir Edward Newton, a scientist, made the precise, precise calculations for what the gold and silver is in the Coinage Act of 1792. So, in order to have a government, um, William Penn said, the government seems to be a part of religion. It is. It's what you believe, and what you believe is what you put into religion. And you don't know, you weren't allowed to talk about religion by this master race, you, they lied about religion and um, smeared people. People have been smeared. Uh, George Washington was smeared. Thomas Jefferson was smeared. Everybody's going around smearing these good people. You weren't there. I'm telling you. You can't be have such a great constitution, a great decoration, unless you know God. Okay? And But there are people out there who want to keep us in bondage, so we can't say... You're not above the laws of God. You have to submit to God. You can't make a law that's above the laws of God. You have to live moral lives. You can't molest children and put them in school and teach them all this funny stuff. You're not above the laws of God. We have to go use this power and this authority and this understanding in order to take a lasso and, and get a hold of society again and bring it back. To under God. And that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to use the Constitution. Hey, Michelle, what's that quote? Use the Constitution as something to tie people down. Thomas Jefferson said. Yeah, I don't remember it. <laughs> Sorry. Leah knows it. I know it right off the top of my head, but I'm just so involved in what I'm saying. I'm sorry. But he did say, tie him down with the Constitution. So that's what we got to do. We got a lasso with the Constitution and tie him down. And that's what I'm telling. That's why I'm so excited. We no longer are an abomination. We em emanation. And we all emanate the fact that God is in us. We've been reconciled unto God. God pour, pour spirit into us. Now we're one with God. And wherever we go, we walk with God, talk with God. He healed with Adam, healed Adam and Eve. And so those without God don't have the same power and authority. They're naked. They're ashamed. They need God in them. 
to have real power and real authority and have an, an emanate God coming out of them and be right all the time. But this is PG signing off. And E. Michelle turned off here real quick. I could have got him done it, but I don't want to mess anything up. Bye.